Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. The United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Listen to these words very carefully. Sneaking into a country doesn't make you an immigrant any more than breaking into a house makes you part of the family. Hmm. Talk about that later with Frosty. Good morning, Zeb the Ranch. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Followed by a patriot starting the week off right with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, good morning. And a good, good morning to you as we start a brand new week, the first full week of March already. Oh, boy, come on, come on, let's root for spring. It's coming up in not too many days. Let's see, first day of spring will be what? Uh, March 20th, I believe. Morning, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our Magic Valley Les Schwamp Tire Centers as our major sponsor and all seven locations with a big spring tire sale. And don't forget, too, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Let's go to the phone line, and good morning for our Pledge of Allegiance. Well, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you much. And right now, let's go to the weather forecast. K&R Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Roger and the crew, they get up early in the morning, and they're over there at 7 o'clock to serve you on the Burley Paul Highway. Number to call, 678-3122. And you can get a hold of them anytime about the availability of certain tools and equipment, and they'll help you with what you need for the various projects, give you the information. Oh, they're good. KNR Rental in Hayburn, 6783122. Right now, here's the weather. If you were praying for sunny skies for this week, well, your prayers have been answered. Here is your weather forecast for Zevitt Ranch. We are looking at mostly sunny skies for today, a little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, right around 15 miles an hour, gusts possible as high as 30. We are expecting a high of 36. For tonight, mostly clear skies with a low of 18. And this high-pressure system will be sticking around with us for the next couple of days. For tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 38. Mostly clear for tomorrow night, low of 17. For Wednesday, sunny and 41. More clouds could be rolling in for Wednesday night. Partly cloudy skies with a low of 24. By Thursday, partly sunny, 46. And for Friday, slight chance of rain or snow in the forecast. Mostly cloudy skies. And a high of 46. That is your weather forecast for Zep at the Ranch. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, of course, brought to you by our friends, Roger and the crew at KNR Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, right there on the Burley Paul Highway. Really good people serving you. And don't forget they've got all your lawn and garden equipment. Thinking spring, give them a call, KNR Rental, 678-3122. We have an outstanding program this morning with a lot of great people on. At 9.06, we've got Frosty Woldridge. And then at 9.30, Megan Barth. I think the world of her and her opinions. 10.06, Dr. Paul Nathanson is going to be talking about the decline of real men and the blame associated to men and then at 1032 maria espinoza talking about the dreamers so we got a really great day today by the way want to say thank you 
Uh, the Raft River Rodeo Club sent me this, and, and we want to plug it for them. Coming up this next Friday night at 6.30, they're going to have their annual dinner and auction. It's going to be held at the Raft River High School Gym. Lots of great food. Oh, boy. Pulled pork. My goodness, yes. And all kinds of great items to auction off. That's going to be this coming Friday night at 6.30 p.m. Raft River Rodeo Club, their annual dinner and auction. Everybody try to be there. I want to remind you, too, for the best in dry cleaning, and that's not brag, that's a fact, go to Daryl's Cleaners at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. And uh, Kevin wants everybody to know that teachers, teachers in Cassia and Minidoka County, uh, go by, show them their teacher's card, and you'll get a 20% discount. Whoa, ho, save your money. And don't forget to take all your dry cleaning there. And don't forget to clean those winter items before you throw them in a chest of drawers or throw them in the closet. Oh, they'll be ready for next fall and winter. Take them in there today to Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. <clears throat> Excuse me, still have that old raspy throat. Must be part of spring. I hope it is. Calls welcome 436 2241 866 927 4587. To all, and I mean this, to all the teams, basketball teams that went to the State Boys Tournament this last weekend, I want to say congratulations to all of you and for making it the state. Don't feel bad about not winning the state title. I mean, my goodness sakes, I know it's easy to say, but your accomplishments and what you did just to get there are outstanding. And I'm saying that because I said the same thing yesterday to my grandson who plays for Kimberly. They didn't have the best of games in the last game at the state championship and along with Burley and many others. I say kudos to what you did and go get them next year, okay? Calls are welcome, 436-2244. I want to remind you, too, about Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The number to call, 6780459. They have all your heating and cooling needs and uh, all your electrical needs. They've got everything, plus they've got a staff of people working there that absolutely know everything that you need to do and have. Okay? Give them a call. Call or stop in six seven eight zero four five nine. Ramsey Heating and Electric open at seven thirty in the morning till five Monday through Friday. Ramsey Heating and Electric. Oh, and by the way, if you're hungry, <clears throat> I know that you probably have heard me bragging about Denny's Restaurant for a long, long time. They are America's diner. Now, they're located at 611 North Overland and Burley, and also they've got another location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. These are the nicest people, the most serving people. I know Michelle and the rest of the great ladies over there that are uh, serving you the most delicious of food off a great menu. You stop in anytime, all the time. At Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner, the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. You stop in and see them today. Did you hear about former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee? And I'm I'm really going to be uh, kind of consolidating this story a little bit. But he is really feeling the wrath and the idiocy of the left. From the Country Music Association. Let me say that again. From the Country Music Association of all groups or beings. He was asked to be on their advisory board. And he lasted not more than a few hours. Why? Because a liberal sleaze that is a member of the board hierarchy of the Country Music Association, did not like Mike Huckabee's conservative viewpoints. They didn't like it because he was not only an NRA uh, card-carrying member, but he supports the NRA, and also that he is a Christian. So this loudmouth liberal sleaze made a big stew, 
and said that Mike Huckabee's not quality to be on the CMA board. Not quality to be on the CMA board. And here's a guy that the only reason he wanted to be on that Country Music Association board is that one of his motives was to try to come up with funding to help supply instruments to needy kids that wanted to become musicians. Oh, horrors! Yeah, that was his main goal. He wanted to get on that Country Music Association board and try to come up with some funding with some of the artists, etc., and uh, their names and their fame that might generate some cash to provide instruments to needy kids that didn't have the money to buy a guitar or whatever. And now a man that's a Christian and NRA card-carrying member and a supporter and a conservative out of the Country Music Association. When you think of country music, you think of conservative values, family values, and not the sleaze and the cesspool of the liberal left. I guess not anymore. Calls are welcome, 436 2244 Want to remind you about our dear friends at Pomerell Place. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Hello, Holly. How are you and the rest of the ladies over there? Uh, There are a lot of risks for seniors living at home alone, whether it's missing your medication or saying, oh, well, I'll take it later in the day and then forgetting, or maybe it's not having proper meals. You know, like I said every day, a Pop-Tart is not a seven-course dinner. And uh, all the safety hazards and just the, the isolation of being all alone and just hoping and praying somebody comes by to see you. Well, at Pomerel Place, It offers the ability for seniors to maintain their independence both safely and comfortably and really enjoy a great environment. Pomerel Place, 1301 Bennett Street in Burley. Number to call 677-8212. You get a hold of those really good people today. Pomerel Place. I also, let's see, I wanted to mention about our friends at Dino Septic Service. <laughs> I bet you eh, they're busy all year round, but I bet you they're really going to be busy as we get closer to spring with all the septic and drain fields installed in the backhoe service and the water and sewer lines installed. And, uh, of course, you know, they take care of your septic tank pumping and all the liquid waste removal. They're busy at a job that you and I don't don't want to do. That's right, Dino Septic Service in Rupert. And there's a couple of telephone numbers for their fast, fair, friendly service to work for you in Rupert, 436-6526. In Burley, 678-1638. Dino Septic Service, you give them a call today. Why don't you give me a call? It's lonesome sitting here this morning. I'm in my little studio at my ranch, and and I'd love to hear from you, so give us a call. Uh, let's see what else have we got here. Uh-oh, this, this really bothers me. And I heard this morning that we're going to hear a lot more about this story in the upcoming weeks. There is, again, a movement by various anti-Christian and anti-religion groups to tear out the crosses at Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, One of those kooky, absolutely left-wing, nutty groups, Freedom From Religion, And they are after the removal of the crosses at Arlington National Cemetery and other locations. And what really irritates me is that we do absolutely nothing. We say nothing. We don't demonstrate or protest against these people. We don't call our politicians. We don't do anything. Maybe one or two or nine or ten people when we're talking 360 million people in this country. And we're being dictated to as to what's good, bad, ugly, or what's indifferent by these kooks called the freedom from religion people. You know, this is a Christian nation has been since its inception. 
And I make no bones about it. And I'm not going to back up and uh, uh, change my attitude or my verbiage on this. It's a Christian nation, and the crosses should and will stay. Now, to those that want to see them removed, to those that want to take everything down, including the crosses off church steeples, when are you and I going to stand up and say, enough of this turning the other cheek? And tell them that's enough. And mean it with severity in our voices. You know, I ask for calls every day on various subjects, but this is one I really want to hear from you. So give me a jingle at 436-2244-1866-927-4587. You know, tomorrow morning you might get out of bed. And you might turn on the news or the radio or look at the newspaper, and it may be too late. Maybe these people that are driven by turning our society into a left liberal loon society, they're winning. And the only reason they're winning is because you and I didn't swat them like a fly with the fly swatter. Calls welcome. Come on, give me a jingle. While I'm waiting for your call, I want to tell you a little bit about Mike, uh, Mike, Nick Greenwell and the rest of his great staff over there at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. I've known Nick for a long, long time, and this man has put together a team of great physical therapists to help you at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. And I'll tell you what, they know all the exercises. They do a comprehensive comprehensive study of uh, what your accident was or surgery that you're trying to come back from and believe me they can help you get back to being you along with that hydrotherapy pool only one of its kind in the entire area burley physical therapy and rehabilitation 1263 bennett avenue suite 2 in burley the number to call 678-1191 All right, come on, get up, get on the phone, and call old Zebra this morning. I'd love to hear from you, and uh, give us a jingle, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Oh, by the way, in a short story this morning, President Trump over the last couple of days was making jokes at the gridiron dinner and uh, made some quips about uh, you know himself and about some of his family members Ivanka and Jared Kushner and then he made a story about President Xi of China and how he had basically told the world that he's going to stay in leadership of that country because he rigged everything and he's going to be the man forever and Trump kiddingly said well maybe that's the way it should be here we should try it The left is absolutely ready to jump off a cliff after he said that. Oh, we told you, Trump's going to be a dictator. Trump's going to be a dictator. And they've absolutely acted like liberal loons that they are. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Um, I want to comment about what you were saying about the, the protection and the flag and the people who have protected us, and they want to take the, the crosses down on Arlington Cemetery. Yes. I'll tell you what, if they tried to do it, I think they would be hit by a a wall of veterans who would be standing there in their way because those people sometimes didn't sign up for the job. But when they were called, they went. And I know because I have a member of my family or two in almost every one of the wars that was fought in this country. And I think probably most Americans do. And you know what? That was the most precious blood that was ever given for any cause because they gave it without question and did it mostly voluntarily. You know, Chris, I I certainly appreciate your call and I appreciate your viewpoint, but I'm going to say this not to make you upset, But you said, oh, if they try to take those crosses down, everybody will be outraged. Well, why aren't we outraged now? 
Because it's not the first time that it's happened. It's happened in other locations around the United States. And we have meekly sat back and not done a thing. Why are we going to do it all of a sudden now at Arlington? Well, I hope we don't let it happen. And unfortunately, a lot of the people in our country, uh, younger than 40, do not even know anything about that place. Amen. Amen. Yes. And that's what our educational system has dropped the ball. Well, I'll give you even one step further. There have been uh, little quips and little quotations made from some of these people with the Freedom From Religion folks. And, Wheels, we got a little bit of feedback on the line, if you would, please. And they even would like to demand and get and receive that no one on private property next to a major thoroughfare, be it a freeway, be it a highway like Highway 30 or whatever, not have allowance for them to even have have crosses on their property but we're sitting here going oh well it'll never happen oh well somebody will step up americans uh, freedom are just little by little inch by inch being taken away by people who are not smart enough to hack, hardly pack their own lunch and that is really sad yeah but chris wait a minute Again, uh, you're a, such a dear friend. You say they're not yeah. smart enough. Well, to be honest with you, I'm concerned that they're too smart because they're wiggling and uh, crawling through the little holes of government and they're making their voices heard and they're getting their way so maybe they're smarter than we are because we're not doing anything to stop them. Well, you, you have a point there. They have so much time on their hands, that's what they do. And some of the rest of us are making a living to keep this country going. I agree. But, you know, I, nobody, everybody that listens to a radio program, I like this one, it could be Hannity, it could be uh, Rush or whomever, they always get upset when somebody like me always says something like, well, we've got to do something, and if it involves a fracas or violence, oh, the left comes out and says, oh, that's that bell, he's advocating violence. But let me ask you this, Chris. If I put a cross out of my front yard, and it's up there because my dad was a soldier in World War II, my uncle was, my, both my uncles were soldiers in World War II, and I lost a lot of buddies in Vietnam, and somebody comes along and takes that cross down or tries to, I'll guarantee you there's going to be a problem. Well, because first of all, they are uh, on your private property, and you're messing with your private property. So they have broken the law. But in, in that case, finding out who they are is probably more difficult than anything. But we have lost our civility in this country, and people do not respect other people's Right. Yeah, but wait a minute. What about the fact that they've already come out, and I've had stories on it, uh, as little as just before Christmas. They want to make sure that crosses that are seen from a public thoroughfare, like uh, around a city block or whatever, their crosses come down because they call it a visual eyesore to those that are not Christian. How are you going to stop that? I don't know. I don't know that we can't cave. Well, and it goes back to what I said a minute ago. It's time not to keep turning the other cheek, Chris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the other cheek is getting kind of raw. There you go. God <laughs> bless you. Thank you for your call. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye -bye. I like that lady. She's really a nice person. Hey, calls are welcome. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Really, isn't it time to stop turning the other cheek? You know... I wanted to bring this up yesterday with our pastor before church, and we didn't have time, but it's just got to the point where you hear these stories and you go, oh, somebody's got to stand up and do something. Well, that somebody is you. I'll go back, and I've said this story before, and then I'm going to give away some cookies here in just a minute. But I had a call. I never will forget this about uh, last October or September. And a guy called up on the radio and he said, well, why don't you do something about that, Zeb? Why don't you call them? And I said, wait a minute. Why don't you? Why don't you 
Start the ball rolling. Why do you turn it over to somebody that's a focal point in the media, whether it's me or whomever, and demand that we always do something or the somethings? What about you getting involved? What about you telling these people what your stand is? Instead of pointing the finger at somebody else and saying, well, why don't you do something? Let's give away some cookies right now to Sophie's Chatterbox. And, of course, Sophie's located right on the square in Rupert. My, 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 530 E Street. And delicious bakery. Oh, they make uh, all the cookies and the pies and the breads and everything along with wedding cakes. They they really have started a great wedding cake business. And I've seen pictures of them. And, oh, oh, oh my, are they beautiful. And a restaurant knock your socks off delicious sophie's chatterbox and if you are a first time winner first time winner call them after you win the cookies okay and tell them when you'll be in there all right here's the question and this one might be a little tough i'm not sure in the old tv series back in the 60s called it was a western called cheyenne clint walker played the lead of cheyenne what was Cheyenne's last name? In the old TV series Cheyenne, what was Cheyenne's last name? They didn't say it very often on the TV series. But Clint Walker, the great big guy, about 6'6", six, six, about 250 pounds, he was the lead actor, played Cheyenne. But what was Cheyenne's last name? Give me a call at 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Come on, quickly, give me a call. I would love to hear from you. And while I'm waiting to hear from you, I also want to remind you, Ramsey Heating and Electric offering rebates, rebates, rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems whether it's a gas furnace air conditioner or a heat pump you and your family will enjoy the comfort call them today Ramsey heating and electric and Lennox saving you money at 6780459 quickly come on somebody's got to have the answer to that question what was in the old western tv series Cheyenne what was Cheyenne's last name and uh, quickly, and you'll be the lucky winner of the cookies. A dozen delicious cookies from Sophie's Chatterbox over in Rupert. <laughs> Caller, good morning. You're on the air. The name was Cheyenne Bodie. Who's this? Berwin Musman. Is this Berwin Musman over in Eden Valley area? Yeah, by the way, Valley was in second place, too, in that tournament. Well, I said congratulations to everybody. I didn't exclude anyone, Berwin. Well, I'm pretty particular. Well, I know you are. That's what your wife keeps telling me. But, uh, no, I I said congratulations to everybody, and uh, I meant that. But, Berwin, you are the lucky winner of a dozen cookies, and you call over there, tell them when you're going to be in there for your cookies, and don't share them with anybody. Just go out in the barn, sit there, and enjoy your doggone cookies. Okay. All right. God bless you, my friend. Good to hear from you. You too. All right. Take care. Uh, Cheyenne Bodie was the name, B-O-D-I-E, and they didn't say it that often. Uh, in the theme music, it was all Cheyenne, 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 and then he was in it. What's your name? My name's Cheyenne. And very seldom did they ever say the last name. Calls welcome, 436-2244. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, Zeb, uh, what we were just talking about, about things had people actually going out and taking action and uh, instead of just saying, well, somebody ought to do something about it. I think there are several reasons why people don't do it. Number one, they're afraid of retribution by the wrong, by the people that, you know, could get them. They, they, they're afraid of being stabbed back. That's one. Number two, it's kind of like you said, oh, well, people think, oh, well, it ain't going to happen to me. I'd, yeah, I'd, never mind, they just shove it under the rug. And uh, 
basically, you know, that's a lot of what it is. I mean, you know, I think a lot of it's just people that just don't want to get involved because of either getting their toes stepped on by somebody, the wrong person hearing about it, or they just don't want it. Okay, but now wait a minute. Let me let me address that with you. I don't think I know you. If I've met you, I I can't quite put the voice with the name, so I apologize. But are you going are, are you going to sit back and say that you're afraid of any retribution, or are you going to sit back and say, "Well, not me. It's never going to happen to me. It happened to my neighbor." But when your neighbor is uh, gone and you're the next man standing and nobody's there to help you, what then? That's true. I mean, that's that's the biggest reason we're in a lot of the dire straits that we're in in this country right now. Got too many people to think that way. Yeah. I don't like wussy people. I don't like people that won't stand up for themselves or what they believe in. And if that sounds harsh, so be it. Because I'll tell you one thing, that's the problem today in America. We're not standing up for the ideals, the goals, and the values that made this country great, and we've turned into a nation of sheep. You're spot on right there. That's exactly what the problem is. I do thank you for your call this morning, and God bless you. Call more often. I appreciate it. You bet. Have a great week. All right, sir. Thank you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. It's true. There is such a thing as free lunch anymore, Zeb. (laughs) Uh, At the Burley Senior Center, which is called the Senior Junction, all week, first single or couple that comes in that's never been there before, I'm buying their lunch. Joe, you are the ambassador for the Senior Junction, and you do a great job. I think they ought to fly you to all the ambassadorial meetings that are held across the world because you're the good one. You're the great one. Thank you so much. Now, today we're having meatloaf and the trimmings. Seems like we're having ham tomorrow, and that's as far as I remember. So I'm hoping somebody comes along and takes me up on this. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to tell people that if you're a single person, you've never eaten at the Senior Junction, or a couple that's never been there, walk in the door and yell, you want Joe Taylor to buy your lunch, and I'll tell you what, he'll whip that billfold out just like he's dragging a Colt 45 out in an old Western, and he'll pay for your lunch. You got it right. Thank you. Have a good day. We appreciate you and all you do. All right, Joe, thank you so much. Good man right there. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Give me a call. Do you realize that there was an estimate over the weekend that over 800 illegal alien felons were allowed to scamper, run, and hide from ICE, Immigration and Custom Enforcement, thanks to that ridiculously low warning by the Oakland mayor. Oh, yeah, she got out there and, oh, run, don't let ICE get you. These are felons. These are people here illegally. And this Oakland mayor is actually doing more and uh, providing more for illegal aliens than she is for the taxpaying American citizens. Oh, run! Don't let them catch you! Poor baby! They shouldn't be here. And over 800, they said, got the notice of warning and scampered off into the darkness. And their big press only netted about 150 people. And it just sickens me to think that the lawlessness on the left is being perceived as greatness. No kidding. Some of the lawmakers, some of the people, some of the Democratic Party are sitting there going, oh boy, did she show them. Now, the next time you get a speeding ticket and you do all you can to beat it or break the law doing anything else, boy, what a good example you're going to be for your kids, aren't you? Oh boy, did you see what dad did? He beat him. He lied. He cheated. He, He didn't do anything by the law. We're proud of dad. 
And that's what's going on with this Oakland mayor. Deception, deceiving, lying, cheating, not honoring the laws of our land, not honoring our Constitution, and the left gives her a round of applause. Sickening. Barry Equipment and Rental. Oh, my goodness, they sales. <laughs> Kind of bit the old tongue there just a little bit. The pain on a 1 to 10 scale was a 36. Uh, Berry Equipment and Rental, Sales, Service, and Parts. And they have three locations, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley with Juan and the crew, and then at 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin with Eli. Eli's a coming. And up in Nampa, oh, my goodness sakes, they have everything. Uh, they've got all the quality Doosan equipment. And we've got to remember, we're getting closer to springtime. They've got all the walker mowers. Ooh, you can mow up a storm with those walker mowers. Equipment rental, retail equipment sales, all of this and more with people that really, really know. And if you don't know how to operate the equipment, they got a big sandbox out behind, and they'll let you play in there until you got it down pat. Barry Equipment and Rental, sales, service, and parts. Highway 30 in Burley, Addison Avenue West in Twin, and up in Nampa. Barry Equipment and Rental. All right, give me a call, 436-224-4186-927-4587. Let's see what else have we got. In the, oh, I watched a little bit of the Oscars last night. I told Deanne, I said I would not watch that sleaze, but I, the, it got the best of me because I wanted to see exactly what kind of things were being said and what kind of people were going to be introduced as presenters. Now, this is purely my own take, and I watched about maybe 15 or 20 minutes of it. But Jimmy Kimmel has my vote for being one of the most worthless left-wing shills on television that was absolutely aiding and abetting criticism of America and downgrading of our United States. And all he did was absolutely want to bait the people coming up or the people doing the presenting into an anti-Trump, anti-America tirade. And one thing I noticed that the guys last night on television that were either doing the presenting or receiving awards, holy cow, what a bunch of noodle-armed wussies. Remember the old days? I guess I'm an old man and I remember this. You know, the the likes of John Wayne and Robert Mitchum and uh, James Stewart and others. I mean, they were men and they acted like men. But these guys, if you want to call them that, it was so disgustingly mm, wistful. Wistful. I don't know if that's a word. It is now. Anyhow, it was pathetic. And I got a really kick out of Dolly Parton. Did you hear that uh, she was uh, on an ABC television interview? And this ABC interviewer was pressing her to say something about politics, really pressing her to get involved in saying something negative about Donald Trump, really pressing her for her political views. And she (laughs) slammed her fist down and said, I'm an entertainer, and I'm not going to go there. And I always liked Dolly Parton. I always liked her music. Now I even love her more because she said it like it should be. I'm an entertainer, and you don't need my political opinion. I have one, but you're not going to get it here. I'm an entertainer. I like that. Time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by our friends at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Oh, they've got not one, but two great doctors working there. And uh, they really take pride on caring for each individual with customized and personal treatment plans for better hearing. Dr. Pickup, 
Dr. Mitchell, they're there to serve you. All you have to do is call the number, make an appointment. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room and the number 312-0957. Right now, here's the weather. If you were praying for sunny skies for this week, well, your prayers have been answered. Here is your weather forecast for Zevith Ranch. We are looking at mostly sunny skies for today, a little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, right around 15 miles an hour, just possible as high as 30. We are expecting a high of 36 for tonight, mostly skies with a low of 18, and this high-pressure system will be sticking around with us for the next couple of days. For tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 38, mostly clear for tomorrow night, low of 17. For Wednesday, sunny and 41. More clouds could be rolling in for Wednesday night, partly cloudy skies with a low of 24. By Thursday, partly sunny, 46. And for Friday, slight chance of rain or snow in the forecast, mostly cloudy skies. And a high of 46. That is your weather forecast for Zephyr the Rain. Uh, there you go. Thank you very much. And, of course, uh, Mount Harrison Audiology really cares about your hearing health goals. And we're working with you to provide the best care possible. Call them at 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. All right, your turn. Give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. You know, Berwyn Musman won the cookies a little bit ago, but I forgot to ask him if he's going to get plain old sugar cookies, and if he does, Berwyn, doggone it, I want half of them. Okay. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. You can't have half. You've won before. I have never taken the cookies. <laughs> That's the problem with being on this show as the host. I don't get any of the goodies I give to you. Well, that's true. That's yeah. true. You're very generous. No, I'm stupid because I love sugar cookies. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <Yeah. laughs> what can I do for you? Oh, I've been trying to listen. I've had a couple of customers in and out, but uh, I was hearing about the cross deal. That is, that is disgusting. And it's time for... Christians to start another crusade like they did back in the, over in Europe, you know. <laughs> let's let's run these guys out. Let's beat evil. Yeah, but Christians Doug, Doug, defeat evil. Doug, you're you're a really good Christian person, and I have the utmost respect for you and your family. But you know, this is not the first time. And by the way, Wheels, there's a little bit more feedback there. Uh, this is not the first time they've had a frontal attack on this type of thing. Sure, they say they're going to take the crosses down at Arlington, but you know, little by little, they go around to different monuments that have crosses, like in California, and then they say, "Well, we we don't want the crosses up on church steeples because you can see them and." And that's offensive. And then they say, well, you can't have crosses here. You can't do that. But you know what? Little by little, this starts to roll like a snowball. And it gains momentum with these sleazy liberals. Doug, we've got a problem here that needs to be addressed. We do. When they, when they come, we need ministers and preachers and the congregation. Everybody needs to get a backbone. And when they come say, you got to do this. That's when we stand up and say no. Well, right there, right there. Whoa, stop the bus, Gus. You hit the nail right on the head. It's going to take, whether they want to hear this again or not, it's the truth. It's going to take ministers, pastors, church leaders with backbone to stand up and say, oh, wait a minute, excuse me. Did you say that you're going to try to take our cross down off our steeple? Well, get the ladder, buddy, and see how that works. Yeah, yeah, come on, let's go. You know, like I like I said earlier, we, we're going to have to start another crusade again yep. to run evil out. I mean, evil will not back down until it's punched in the nose, and then it'll start to back down. Yeah, but, but you know, it, right there, though, Doug, the left hates that kind of talk. Oh, why? You're advocating violence. Well, listen, they're turning us into a corner. They're pushing us in that corner. They're painting us into a corner. And I don't know about you, Dougie. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm not going to say that. I know that you would be the first one probably to lash out and say, that's enough, Buckwheat. I've had all your garbage I'm going to take. Yep, because their rights end where my nose begins. That's it. And once they, when they push, you know... We've given, we've given, we've given. It's, it's now we're in a corner where they're wanting to take it all. 
And, and every day it's getting someplace, Doug, to where they're gaining a little traction here. And then they gain a little traction there. Whether it's Arlington Cemetery or whether it's the crosses on the highway honoring someone that had a terrible, tragic accident. Whether it's on the steeple, whatever it is. Maybe it might be a lapel pin, a cross on your lapel pin. Oh, you can't wear that there. Oh, you can't have that cross or anything in God we trust parked on uh, uh, property, city property or county property. You've got to take that thing off. It's happening every day, and we don't do anything about it. That's right. That's right. That's why I say we need to get another crusade going. Well, I'm on your side because when I hear these stories about how they want to stop my religion and stop Christianity, and then I hear about Mike Huckabee, a man that is an ordained minister, he's a conservative, he's an NRA member, and all he wanted to do on that CMA board was absolutely try to get some funds to bring music, musical instruments to the kids that just didn't have the money, and they threw him off because they said he was a sleazy conservative. Exactly. That's right then and there, and the ones that advocated for that, the stars that advocated for that, Christians need to vote with their pocketbook and not buy another one of their albums. Bingo. Got another call waiting, Doug. Thank you for your call. Hey, God bless, and let's do what we can for our seniors. They're needing our help every day, and let's do what we can. Amen, and thank you, Doug. I never let you go until you have your tagline. Thank you much. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning, Zeb. Yeah, Tony. You know, uh, churches had a reason not to get involved uh, before uh, kind of this tax exemption stuff. Trump is in office now. He would back them 100% to get involved in anything like this. There comes a time, Tony, and I don't have to tell you this, because you've been through some really rough times here in this United States. But there comes a time when you have to forget about tax statuses or anything else, and you have to stand up, and you have to honor your commitment and your principles. And right now, it's that time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this this country is in trouble. Uh, right now, uh, so many people like uh, Schumer and Pelosi and uh, Ryan and uh, McConnell, they want to do away with the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. And the churches are going to have to get involved because there's millions and millions of, of members. Now that they shouldn't be in fear of losing their tax exemption. Yeah. And I think that's what a big pro- part of the problem is. Well, when, you, when people get so afraid about losing something, they lose more because they do nothing. Yeah, you know, we've got a lot of fairgrounds around here that we could have big demonstrations, uh, peaceful demonstrations. I'd pay 10 bucks to get in to have a couple thousand people over there to get the right speakers and to get people uh, energized. Well, you know my stand on this. I think little by little, inch by inch, uh, foot by foot, like the old Abbott and Costello routine, the left, the sleaze, and the slime are taking over all aspects of what used to be family and uh, moral values, and they're decreasing everything in this country, and we're not doing one doggone thing to fight back. Well, look at the Emmy Awards, how political those things are getting. Yeah. Those people are pumping millions and millions of dollars into the destruction of our country. Yeah. Tony, uh, by the way, I hope Mary's doing well. I know you're doing well because I can still hear that feistiness. Thank you so much, and God bless you both. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Jim. God bless Bye. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Uh, I want to remind you about, oh my goodness, I just about tipped over the whole apple cart here. Uh, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center is a big spring tire sale. Oh my goodness, they've got the Thunderer City. Thunderer, that's hard to say. Thunderer, that's how it is. Th- it's not thunder, it's thunderer. <laughs> City Tire for your cars at just thirty nine ninety nine. Now that I've killed about half the commercial on Thunderer and all season traction tire affordable pricing on sale. And then they've got like the Open Country HT for your pickups and SUVs on sale. My goodness, it is a spring tire sale. It's your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. Don't forget the 
best in brake service. Front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries at the best that provide the best in service. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul. Really nice people. Daniel on Poline and Twin and Randy Mole, buddy on Overland and Burley. The best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You don't want to miss the next half hour. We've got Frosty Woldridge coming up. And we're going to be talking about losing our culture in America. And then at 9.30, a lady that I really enjoy having on the program, Megan Barth. We're going to be talking about gun control, the NRA. And we're going to be talking about uh, kids that want to become socialists instead of having a capitalist system. All kinds of goodies coming up this next hour. But right now, back over to wheels. I'll be back in seven. Uh, good morning on a Monday. Kind of a uh, funny, hazy, partly cloudy sky out there on a Monday. But good morning, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with a big spring tire sale going on right now. Along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services and Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 and Burley, helping you get back to being you. And right now, also this word for Western Waste. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're always the short and slow. Western Waste Services, we care about our community, our resources, and this free land. Western Waste Services is lending a hand, always at your disposal. Western Waste Services. You got to turn the mic on, Zeb. <laughs> Sorry about that. Western Way Services get on their route service, and they'll be there to pick up your trash weekly. It's gone. It's out of there. Give them a call today, 734-6969. Absolutely the best in serving you, always at your disposal. Western Way Services, 734-6969. Hey, I want to remind you, too, about Lennox and Ramsey Heating and Electric. Oh, my goodness, yes. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox offer rebates on Lennox Home Comfort Service uh, Systems, pardon me. It's been a long morning. And whether it's a gas furnace, an air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will always enjoy the comfort. Call Ramsey's at 678-0459. Lennox and Ramsey, there's no place like home, and they help ensure it by stopping in and visiting with them about the Lennox Home Comfort Systems. And one last word, we want to say big thank you to a super good friend of this program and along with his family and his staff joel heward is serving you at hanson mortuary at 710 6th street in rupert you know when there's the passing of a loved one everything comes to a screeching halt nobody knows what has to be done in a big hurry and they can and they will help hanson mortuary in rupert always always with the highest ethical ethical standards with unquestioned integrity Please write the number down and give them a call. 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary in Rupert with Joel Heward. And Joel also serving you and your family at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Right now, we're going to go to the phone line. I've looked forward to our conversation from last Monday. He wrote another great piece that we're going to be discussing uh, on our program this morning, and it's entitled, Are We Losing America to Endless Immigration? And my friend, Frosty Woldridge, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. Always a pleasure. And uh, to each and everyone listening out there in Radio Land, just uh, a good morning and uh, a start of another week and new possibilities for all of us. Frosty, I want to ask you a question. I'm not trying to put you on the spot at all because you and I are on the same page. But if you had to define in a paragraph or more what America's culture is, how would you define that? Well, it once let me start that over. America's culture used to be, uh, you know, God, uh, family, uh, apple pie, uh, work, and a 
sense of 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 well being uh, that was brought about by the freedom to express ourselves, uh, the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights. We are really the the harbinger country of the world to actually vote uh, our leaders into office to lead us forward. Uh, and that, to me, is what America has been all about. Uh, God, mother, father, uh, family, uh, and apple pie. Yeah. <laughs> so. it, it, as corny as it may sound to some, it means everything to me. It's the culture of maybe going to the baseball game or going to church on Sunday and worshiping in the house of worship that you choose and being able under the doctrines and freedoms in this country to go out and really perceive and and go after any job career that you want if you want to use your God-given talents. But then on the other side of that coin, I'm getting a little miffed at people coming in here bringing their culture that they're escaping, whether it is a foreign country in the Middle East or wherever, and bringing the culture culture here, trying to dominate their culture here, and basically start their own country they fled and started over again in this United States. And I am not a fan of that. Well, that makes two of us. And, of course, anyone who lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota, with 120,000 Somali refugees who are living on, virtually all of them living on welfare, uh, and also bringing in Sharia law, which is counter to everything of the U.S. Constitution. Certainly it's counter to women's rights, free speech, choice of religion, choice of dress, uh, choice of your, of your spouse, uh, and, and choice of language, and choice of religion. Uh, the same thing happening in this parallel society known as Detroit, Michigan now, with over 300,000, I think 350,000 Muslims from the Middle East and Africa. We are definitely losing our country, the United States of America, to endless immigration. And uh, that's what this, this commentary that I wrote is all about. And I think everyone listening out there, just listen to Herman Hesse. He was a great writer. He, he did Siddhartha and he did a few others, da- Damien. Uh, and he said, and I'm quoting, every age, every culture, every custom and tradition has its own character, its own weakness, and its own strength. It features its beauties and its ugliness, accepts certain sufferings as matters of course, and puts up patiently with certain evils. Human life is reduced to real suffering and hell only when two ages, two cultures, and two religions overlap, unquote. I I want everyone to really listen to that and take a deep breath, because we are now in the face of different cultures, Uh, from different ages and these 6th century religions uh, coming into our country and it's overlapping and so it's my contention that we're losing America to endless immigration because our country, our culture our religion, our way of life is becoming everybody else's and it's not compatible with ours And that is going to be the greatest tragedy of the 21st century for the United States of America. You know, and I will say this, and I want you to respond, that everybody that preaches diversity, why, we have to have more diversity, we have to have more of this and that. Diversity actually breeds division, and that's what we're seeing in this country. Well, that's correct. And, you know, most people don't realize this, but again, I I want to quote this again by the great social scientist, Garrett Hardin, who was brilliant, just brilliant. He said, and I quote, diversity within a nation destroys unity and leads to civil wars. Immigration, a benefit during the youth of a country, can act as a disease in its mature state. Too much internal diversity in large nations has led to violence and disintegration. We are now in the process of destabilizing the United States of America. The magic words of destabilizers are diversity and multiculturalism. And I would ask everyone, uh, you know, you can go to my Facebook page and you'll see the, t- the, the title. Uh, but it, I have a, a, a historical video. It's a 10-minute video called The Ultimate Connection of Immigration to War in America. And this video will show you how every country that accepted a massive immigration fell. It literally fell into civil war and conflict. Lebanon is the latest, of course. 
but you can also see it already happening in America, you can see it happening in Canada, and you can see it happening in Europe. And what really throws me on this thing, Zeb, is that our representatives are not only not doing anything to stop it, they're enhancing it by adding more and more immigration into this country, uh, more and more uh, really representing uh, illegal aliens and foreign interests in our country already, uh, giving votes to illegal aliens in our country, and, and literally tearing up the foundation of our culture so that we really no longer have what was once known as America and apple pie and baseball games and Norman Rockwell paintings and all that goes with yeah. Frosty, I would say this, and I'd like you to elaborate on it, uh, that if you and I, all of a sudden, after this program's over at 11 o'clock today, we got on the telephone and we said, you know what, we're going we're gonna to have a great big event. We're going to have a, a, a culture, American Culture Day, and we're going to get it all put together, and we're going to have speakers and everything else. I would guarantee you that the left would come crawling out from under their rocks and they will start calling us white nationalist racists because we're trying to promote what they think is nothing more than racism. How much you want to bet, old buddy? Oh, we can, you, you, can, you can bet on that. You know, but at the same time, uh, you know, Oprah Winfrey can be heard on, uh, on a video YouTube interview that the only way to stop racism in America is to have all the uh, white people die. I mean, she said that. Yeah. And, and you, 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 you can hear, you know, Joy Bear, Behar there on The View that uh, we, we've got to get rid of all of, of anyone who thinks that, uh, that, that black people aren't, uh, you know, we, we, they're so prejudiced against when, in fact, that whole, that whole View thing, I, I can't even watch it. I, I watched a couple of shows and it makes me sick. But that everybody is trying to make every white person in this country a racist. When in fact, you know, whether it's Colin Kaepernick or you go on to, to Oprah Winfrey, none of those people of color, uh, African Americans, black Americans or otherwise, could ever rise to the level of fame and wealth and standard of living back in Africa. And no African, as, as a matter of fact, I challenge every liberal out there listening today, there is no African that lives up to the standard of living that every black American here in America lives. Yeah. Uh, African Americans live at the highest standard of living in, world, in the world compared to all of the Africans and uh, the Middle Easterners, you name it. You, you take a trip to Africa for two weeks, and I guarantee you this, our poorest of poor, the, the guy shining shoes on the New York street or, or the chambermaid cleaning up or the janitor or whatever lives a higher standard of living times 10 of any of their African brothers and sisters. That's a fact. So I'd say that racism and that white nationalism and all the other stuff that these people charge holds no water because African Americans here in the United States of America have the highest standard of living in the world, period. Frosty, it seems like, and I want you to tell me if I'm wrong or if you have another viewpoint, but it seems like to me, more so than ever before in this country, America, there is a slamming, a condemnation, and a damning of Caucasians, the whites, me and you and others, by whites on the left that want to do nothing more than try to create uh, more diversity and more of a divide in this country so that they'll vote for their political party. Am I wrong? Well, you're right. You know, I would ask every person listening today, and I think you can hear the ring of truth in my voice. Do you think, on our this onslaught of diversity into our country, do you think that any Somalian or Congolese or Indonesian or Sudanese or Ethiopian or Iranian or Afghanistanian or Assyrian or Egyptian or dozens of other ethnic groups possess anything in common with average Americans? I mean, do they? And, of course, the answer is no. They have nothing in common with us. Why are they flooding into this country? Why is Congress allowing this flood? And this is a flood, 1.7 million every year coming in. 
Well, it's because their situations in their countries are so miserable, so downtrodden, so racist, so religiously intolerant, so completely starving, so completely at war, and so completely in chaos, that it has, there's nothing worth living in those countries. That's the facts. And yet they come here, and they want to make our country like their country. Yeah. I'm sorry. The American people need to, to rise up and stop this mass immigration crisis before, again, as I've said many times, and I will continue to say, we become the victims of this next added 100 million Americans entering our country. Well, I, I know you already mentioned the man, but I want to go back to it again because I think it bears more of a uh, kind of a response. Social scientist Garrett Hardin with his line that started by saying, diversity within a nation destroys unity and leads to civil wars. My goodness, that should be so obvious, Frosty, but people ignore it on the left, and they're pushing for more dissension. Well, you know, it's the same thing as one of the liberals over in, in Germany said that in order to stop all the rapes that are happening from the Muslim, uh, you know, uh, onslaught of, uh, I think, over two million um, um, uh, literally Muslims came into Germany and, and flooded all over Europe in the last two years uh, from Africa and the Middle East. And now they have uh, rape is a normal aspect of German society, Norwegian yeah. society, Swedish society, Dutch, and go on down the line. And one of those liberals sat there and said, well, we need to bring in more Muslim women so these Muslim men will rape their own women instead of our women. Oh, my. I mean, that is liberal thinking. I mean, that is liberal lunacy. And so here we are, the most diverse country in the world, trying to hold ourselves together and not doing very well when it comes to Black Lives Matter and shooting cops on the streets by black people. Uh, the murder rates in, the, in black Chicago are off the charts. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood is making its inroads and in creating Sharia law in our country. And, of course, Luis Gutierrez was on NPR this morning, and he spouts off all of his Mexican garbage. Uh, he, he's not an American, he's, but he's a House of Reps, and, and he, he sits here. He would like to see the United States destroyed. That's what kind of guy he is. And you think this diversity and this, and this multiculturalism is working? Uh, liberals out there, uh, you got another thing coming. If we had another hundred million of this wonderful, diverse, and multicultural uh, mob descending on our country, it's not going to work out the way you think it is because it's not working out now. Am I right or am I wrong? Well, absolutely. And you mentioned Luis Gutierrez from Illinois, and he is such a disgusting individual and so rude. He was the one that on national television got up and walked out, stormed out, during the State of the Union message and never faced any retribution for being so rude whatsoever. Well, did you know what he said? It was on tape. He said, I hate Americans, as he walked out. Yeah. That should give you a clue. He, he's representing the U.S. Constitution, and he actually hates the U.S. Constitution, and he hates Americans. He's not an American. He's a Mexican plant in our country. Uh, almost uh, uh, another Barack Obama stuck in the, in the House of Representatives uh, that doesn't have any affinity to America. Let's face it, Barack Obama had no affinity to America. He proved it every day he was sitting there in the White House. I'm telling you, this thing is not going to end well for anybody if we don't get it stopped. I agree Mass with you. immigration into America. We have a caller with a quick question. Caller, go ahead, please. Make your comment. Go ahead. Well, one thing about America is the, the business people, the free market capitalists that keep this thing running, they're not, generally speaking, of Mexican descent. Ninety-five percent of them are something else. And this is the thing. You look at the economy of, of California, and it's on its butt. And it's going south, and, and they're a trillion dollars in debt. And, they're, and it's not getting better, and they have no intention of doing anything but catering to the illegals to get reelected. Camilla Harris might be the, one of the most frightening things on earth, and she may run for president. 
I'll hang up. You know, he really brings up a good point about California and also Camilla Harris. Uh, I've done some research and study on Camilla Harris, and I'll tell you what, Frosty, if anybody on the left, uh, this woman scares me. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, whether it's uh, uh, Maxine Waters or Sheila Jackson uh, or, or, you know, all of California. I mean, Dianne Feinstein, completely out of touch with reality. Nancy Pelosi. I mean, we're talking nutcases, verified nutcases that are not functioning in the real world. I and mean, that's California. Jerry Brown does not function with a rational mind, with a reasoned mind, or with logical choices. California will become America's first failed state. I can, I'll predict that. I project that. That's what's coming. Because at some point, there's so many people tearing down the, the, the laws and the rule of law in California. And so many third worlders there that literally cheat and lie and thieve and, and forgery and shoplift and, and all that goes with that, that California is going to collapse uh, uh, because it has become a third world population. And that the, the, the caller just hit it right on the, uh, on the money. Well, you know, I want to get uh, one last comment from you on this Camilla Harris, because Newsmax magazine just ran a comprehensive study on her and where she stands. And yes, I believe she is going to throw her hat in the ring, so to speak, for presidency. But she has emerged as one of the leading political figures standing in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. And that, to me, right there is a great big red flag. Well, again, you're seeing the, 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 this entire country become balkanized, where we once had all Americans thinking for all Americans, pulling in the same direction, with the same language, with the same ethos. Even all the blacks and all the Mexican Americans that are in this country uh, back in 1965, we were all in this together. We all spoke English. We all had a common heritage. We all had the same culture. Today, we have lost that American culture. Somebody like Camilla Harris is going to play on all of that ethnic uh, the variety and diversity and multiculturalism. And at some point, again, in 2042, take this down, Mexican Americans, Latinos, Hispanics will become the new majority in our country. And you're going to see all hell break loose when it starts, when all these elections come to four. And we're just going to see such fracturing. But you're all going to, also going to see the you know, financial situations collapse as more and more people live on the socialism of the Democrats. And 48 million on food stamps right now, what happens when it's double that? What happens when we have 100 million people on, on food stamps or on welfare and Section 8 housing? Uh, Camilla Harris, and then she gets in and this adds more to it. Uh, folks, we are losing our country as fast as this massive onslaught continues. And that's why I wrote this piece. Are we losing America to endless immigration? And, Zeb, the answer is, you bet your bippy we are. Yep. And at a speed that I am astounded at. I am, too. Frosty, thank you for being so straightforward and honest on our program like you are every week. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Frosty Woldridge, Golden, Colorado. Talk to you next Monday, my friend. Thank you. Godspeed, my friend. Thank you very much. Straight honest, that's what we're going to be on this program. That offends some on the left, but uh, they're not used to being straightforward and honest. So I can see where they're a little bit in a quandary. Uh, let's remind everybody about uh, Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Hello, Jeff. Hello, everybody over at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. It's time to spruce up. Yes, it is. It's springtime. Yeah, I'm getting really overly optimistic. It's springtime, and I'll tell you what, they've got the greatest selections of all the carpet and the luxury vinyl planking, and of course, all the bedroom sets and the living room and dinette sets, and they've got all the recliners. Oh, yes, you'd better get in there today. Jeff and the great crew at Lee's Furniture Floors and More, 459 Overland in Burley. It's time to spruce up. Get in there today. Thank you. I really enjoyed our conversation last week uh, with Nick over at Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. And it really was true what he said about when you go in the showroom, just stop. 
turn your head to the left, turn your head to the right. Holy moly, you're going to go, how did they get all these outfits in here? They've got all the four-wheelers and they got all the side-by-sides. Oh my goodness, what a great big selection to get outside and enjoy some fun here in southern Idaho. Yep, springtime coming. And by the way, if you already have four-wheelers, be sure and call their service department and get them over there, get them serviced. Tyson and the crew can help you, they will. And that's it, let's ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. It is true. This is where the fun is sold. By the way, if you're over in that neck of the woods or that part of the desert, don't forget to stop in and see our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert, and uh, they'll help you with your life insurance, your health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and more for you, your family, and your business. Please, these people are very dedicated and responsive to your needs. All you need to do is make a call, make an appointment, 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, serving you. Uh, right now we're going to go to the phone line, and every single time I have this lady on my program, you, the listener, can rest assured she's going to be straightforward, honest, and tell it like it is. That's why I like having her on the show. Good morning to a wonderful lady, founder and proprietor of ReaganBabe.com, Megan Barth. How are you? Hey, Zeb, I'm doing well. Happy Monday to you. No, there's no such thing. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm I know. kidding. You, <laughs> you know, I, I'm actually motivated by seeing the Oscars drop another 16% from last year. I, I couldn't agree more, but I will say this. I really enjoy having you on the air because we get a chance to talk about things in an honest fashion, not the liberal sleaze that we hear all day long. I wanted to ask you about what happened in Parkland, Florida. I wanted to ask you about the shooting. I wanted to ask you about the aftermath and the similarities, if you will, of not being told the truth from both Las Vegas and then this absolutely heinous crime in Florida. How would you draw similarities? Well, I I think there's many many similarities. Um, Number one, uh, we have uh, a mainstream media that only seems to be interested in one side of the argument or not at all interested in finding out the facts. I think those both go hand in hand. Uh, They only want to have a gun control debate when they are controlling the debate. Uh, They do not want to look at the many common denominators of young male mass shooters, and there are many common denominators, uh, and I will list those. They don't want to highlight the dissent of many students and parents who are calling for the arming of teachers, increased security at our schools, instead of the disarmament of the American people, which many of these survivors in Parkland have now been given a national spotlight because they are becoming progressive pundits. Uh, These progressive pundits, these pupils, who are aligning themselves with Democrat organizations and are being funded by Democrat organizations and are even being pseudo-celebrities on Twitter, are getting the stage and and the highlights, but the voices of dissent like the students that agree with both you and I from a constitutional perspective, are relatively silent. So there is a debate to be had. However, a debate is, a, is based in logic and reasoning and facts and not hyperbole. Um, the Democrats often use fear to advance policy. The uh, latest gun control uh, piece of legislation that came out within seemingly hours of this latest massacre is true gun confiscation. Uh, This is the slippery slope. This is the incrementalism of the progressive movement. But they will chip away at each amendment like they did the First Amendment, where now we have free speech zones at schools. And even on the Bundy Ranch, if you'll recall, uh, there was a free speech zone where the government expected the thousands of people, the militia, that arrived on horseback to corral their horses in front of a sign for free speech. And I have to talk about the Bundy Ranch just for uh, uh, an example of why the Second Amendment and the protection of it and 
no infringement of it should ever be considered. Because the Bundys who owned the ranch since 1860 uh, had supposedly owed the government around maybe a million dollars in fines on some back taxes or grazing fees. And the government descended upon their property with armed federal agents from the Bureau of Land Management and the Federal Bureau of Investigation on behalf of supposedly the protection of a desert tortoise. If the government can arm itself to the hilt and then limit free speech to a zone on a family ranch and thereby try to compensate the land based on their need to protect a desert tortoise, we have much larger problems in this country as far as the weaponization of government and the tyranny of a large government, which is what the Second Amendment protects us from. Because the Bundy and the Bundy militiamen that had showed up and supported the Bundys took their ground and forced the federal agents off their ground, it did not prohibit the government from suing the, the uh, Bundys and charging them with a variety of crimes, which landed the Bundy family in jail, many, Cliven and his son, uh, many in uh, a solitary confinement, just to have a judge last month exonerate them completely with prejudice, which means that the government can no longer charge them with any future charges because the government would not provide exculpatory evidence in their discovery to the judge when requested. So, we know that we had a weaponized government under Barack Obama. We know that he used the tyranny of this weaponized government against his political enemies like the Bundys, and that is exactly why we have the Second Amendment. The Parkland shooting, the common denominators of that kid uh, was number one. Plenty of warning signs. Warning signs, 39 of them, 39 visits to the kid's house. He had exhibited mentally ill behavior. He was under the care of a psychiatrist. His aunt had called the Broward County Police Department saying that he was dangerous. There, there was a neighbor that said he was going to become a professional school shooter, and they did nothing to log these mental health complaints against this kid. And if they had logged those mental ill, mental Ill complaints uh, in a report and filed it with the state, the kid would have never been able to purchase a gun. Number two, this kid, because he was mentally ill, uh, was diagnosed at an early age with something called ADHD. Now, in this country, we overprescribe medication, specifically psychotropics, to young children. They don't do that in places like France. They recognize ADHD, but they do not drug the kids. They treat it through behavioral and nutritional treatment. The psychotropics that have been poured into our children's mouth by whacked psychiatrists making this diagnosis, there is no studies that show how the effects of these psychotropics over the long term affect the mental health of these kids, but we do know that they have tendencies to produce a desensitization to violence and also an occurrence of violence because they've been desensitized. Uh, we also know that this kid, much like many of the other shooters, grew up in a single parent home without a father. We have a cultural rot going on in this country that the liberal progressives don't want to talk about because it is the progressives who destroyed the nuclear family, who told generations of kids that they only need one parent uh, maybe a single mom or a single dad or two dads or two moms. They have destroyed the nuclear family. They have inundated these kids with violent images from the entertainment industry as well as the news industry. And they've even confused kids so much as to which bathroom they should use. And they've also called kids who are white uh, basically toxic males. And so we have demasculated males that we are rearing in these progressive indoctrination centers called schools. I absolutely am going to keep that last dissertation and play it back and back again because I think that was one of the best synopsis of information as to what's happening I've ever heard. Megan, I salute you for that. I want to go back and I want to ask you about this toxic masculinity or the toxic males. You know, this seems like a crutch or some kind of an excuse by the left to keep damning and condemning the men in our society and now the young men and uh, the toxic male syndrome would you please explain to me what the toxic male syndrome is today as compared to maybe 40 years ago 
Well, there was no such thing as toxic males 40 years ago. That word did not come into our lexicon until the cultural Marxists took over many of our education institutions uh, and areas of learning. Um, cultural Marxism in, in and of itself, if you look in the Urban Dictionary of what that means, or if you look at Andrew Breitbart's book, Righteous Indignation, uh, and even Jordan Peterson, a psychologist out of Canada who's now getting some um, you know, uh, news-worthy uh, you know, uh, sound bites uh, on Fox News, etc. Uh, it is the destruction of basically the traditional institutions which create a civilized society, whether that is the nuclear family or religion uh, or, or role models uh, that we can look up to. Now, toxic mas- masculinity is not always applied to every race. It's usually applied to the white race. And this is, again, an uh, adjunct uh, and a consequence of cultural Marxism, whereby we need to divide the country based on race and sex or gender or genderless societies uh, in order to recreate, uh, one, tear down the institutions of what made this country great in order to recreate a progressive uh, paradise. Barack Obama uh, did so from the bully pulpit by saying he wanted to fundamentally transform this country. Well, the fundamental transformation means you want to basically destroy all of the traditional institutions that made this country great and then recreate it into the progressive image, the culturally Marxist image. And so without the division that the Democrats and progressives seek to create, they cannot win. Uh, We saw this in the latest election. But the politics of personal destruction, which is called identity politics, is the only narrative that the Democrats or platform that they can run on because they do not have solutions to the existing problems that we face today in our country because they have been responsible for many of the problems we face in our country today. Uh, Deb, one thing I have to point out, which Betsy DeVos, who is the Secretary of Education, has since repealed, for eight years under Barack Obama, he changed the Title IX um, statute that affected colleges as well as grade schools and high schools that uh, boys that were accused of sexual assault or rape or harassment could not re- be represented by a lawyer. The cops were not mm-hmm. supposed to be called by the, uh, the, the, the education uh, institution, whether that was a college. They needed to hire Title IX administrators in order to be the judge, jury, and executioner based on hearsay and not evidence. We had plenty of young males at colleges across the camp, uh, country, for example, at the University of Virginia, whereby Rolling Stone ran this article by Jane Doe, and Jane Doe she said that basically the whole fraternity gang raped her. It turned out to be a completely fabricated story but not until the boys were completely publicly smeared and their fraternity disbanded. Right. The same thing happened at Duke. The same thing happened at Columbia. And it was because of the expansion of Title IX, which empowered these self-loathing feminists to destroy their male counterparts in their quest for equality. You know, Megan, that was excellent the way you projected that. And I want to stick with Title IX just for a minute. I know we're kind of shotgunning our approach here this morning. But Title IX, in a very simplified form and verbiage, is uh, something that was put forth to make equality and fairness for women's sports, basically. And now with the transgender movement, you can throw that out the window because now the crossover is absolutely destroying not only women's sports, but any accumulation of sports records, like in the Olympics. Etc. We are living in a really screwed up society. Well, it's, 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 it's from a culturally Marxist point of view where genders aren't scientifically based, they're fluid, right? It's whatever the kid wakes up one day. If Bob, Bobby wants to be Betty, uh, he can do so by just simply changing his name and self identifying as a woman. If Betty wants to be Bobby, she can do the same thing. We saw this in Texas whereby a female wrestler decided to transition into a male wrestler. She's still competing against the females, even though she is taking male growth hormones, testosterone. So shouldn't that tell you that actually testosterone does 
create a difference between men and women when it comes to strength and when it comes to identity. But the progressives don't want to recognize gender because they have to destroy gender. You know, transgenderism used to be called gender dysphoria, and that is the clinical term by where it was labeled by who a mental illness. Uh, and this is now what we, what the progressive has have done is basically normalize uh, the uh, gender dysphoria into something called LGBT. But it didn't stop there. It is now LGBTIQ, you know, and with all of these other uh, acronyms attached uh, to the back end of it. So when we have 68 different freaking genders, then there is no elevation or sanctity given on the procreation that can only happen between a female and a male. And that is what makes the nuclear family. You know, and let's pursue that point just a little bit now before I run out of time. I have refused on this program to give any acknowledgement to the transgenders and their new name, if you will, especially in the case of Bradley Manning. Here was a traitor to our country. And now with his transgenderism and being excused from his prison term by Barack Obama, he's back on the streets, might even run for political office, and he is speaking at UCLA this week, and he's going to be talking about a all things ethics please respond to that and then we'll take a call uh yeah well again we have the higher institutions of learning elevating all of that which is wrong and all and, and then suppressing all of that which is right and i don't mean uh right as far as conservative, but we can also go there where campuses are no longer free speech uh you know advocates they suppress conservative speech and then elevate traitors like Bradley Manning, likely because he is simply a transgender male who transitioned into a female, and somehow that is great. Yeah. Let's take this call quickly. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Thank you. Well, our society is so broken down that the uh, perpetuation of this whole thing, whether or not it's in the schools, it's our physicians, our physicians are prescribing drugs to young children, and they're giving testosterone to young girls who think they want to be men, and the opposite to young men who want to be, they think they want to be girls, and they have no idea what it's going to do to these children that have no idea what they're getting themselves into and what it might do to their health, and, uh, and they're, let's face it, these young people, they're confused. They do not know what to do, and uh, they're being pushed by grown-ups who are supposed to know better. Uh, respond to the caller, if you would, please, Megan. Thank you. Well, right. I mean, these young kids are being used as guinea, guinea pigs. They are basically being given way too much power uh, for their age. Uh, a six-year-old uh, doesn't know what he wants for breakfast in the morning, but if the six-year-old all of a sudden wants to wear dresses when he's a boy and wants to get hormone replacement therapy at that age, you're going to find some quack doctor uh, along with his quack parents to experiment on this young kid, as well as you see with the high schools placating uh, these genderless bathrooms and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, into uh, you know installing new bathrooms because kids are so confused as to what role they should play in society because the roles and the lines have been completely blurred. Um, however, I I'm a more of an optimist that there's actually more of us than there are of them, but the problem is we need to push back, especially at the local level, when you have school board administrators that are playing with your child's lives as well as doctors that are playing with their chi with your child's life, but it's truly up to the parents to get control uh, of the situation and demand uh, that girls be treated as girls, boys be treated as boys, and as a woman myself, I don't want to have another man in my bathroom, so where do my rights stop and his rights proceed? 
That is the problem. You know, and real quick, uh, Megan, is sanity going to be able to prevail when people are not willing to get involved? That's the biggest problem in America today. Everybody sits back and says, well, let somebody else do it. Well, why don't you go do this? Well, why don't they get involved? We're all going to have to get involved, and we're going to have to stop turning the other cheek, and we're going to have to say enough is enough. You fight back at the ballot box, and I'll tell you what, this 2018 election is just as important as the 2016 election. The NRA itself has 500,000 more members after Parkland than it did before Parkland. The gun show in Florida had more attendees and gun sales after Parkland than it did before Parkland. But it takes more than buying guns and signing up for the NRA. You have to make sure that your registration is in order, and you have to make sure that when you go to the polls, you bring 10 of your closest friends, and you flood the ballot box, and you drive all of these cultural Marxists out of your school board, out of your judiciary, out of your state senate, out of your state assembly, and out of the federal government. Amen. Megan Barth, founder and proprietor of ReaganBabe.com and nationally recognized political commentator and women's advocate, and I like her on this program. Megan, God bless. Come back soon. Anytime, Zeb. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. A wonderful lady right there, and she tells it like it is. Thank you very much. Right now, it's time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company, providing accounting services to the Minicasha area for well over 50 years. They are busy. I, I think they've made a kind of a pitch to pup tent right there at their office during tax time, and uh, they go from the desk to the pup tent to get a little sleep, and they get back to the desk again. The best of tax return preparation and tax planning and payroll services, retirement planning, all of this and more. And they're busy now, and they can, and they will help you. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company in Burley and Rupert. Right now, here's the weather. If you were praying for sunny skies for this week, well, your prayers have been answered. Here is your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. We are looking at mostly sunny skies for today, a little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, right around 15 miles an hour, just possible as high as 30. We are expecting a high of 36. For tonight, mostly clear skies with a low of 18. And this high-pressure system will be sticking around with us for the next couple of days. For tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 38. Mostly clear for tomorrow night, low of 17. For Wednesday, sunny and 41. More clouds could be rolling in for Wednesday night. Partly cloudy skies with a low of 24. By Thursday, partly sunny, 46. And for Friday, slight chance of rain or snow in the forecast. Mostly cloudy skies. And a high of 46. That is your weather forecast for Zep at the Ranch. And thank you much. Brought to you by some really good people I know, because that's where we go. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Providing accounting services to the Minicasha area, like I said, for over 50 years with offices in Burley and Rupert. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing good for the second time, Zeb. <laughs> okay. uh, can I talk about uh, that? age change for buying a gun? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the government's going to ask our 18-year-olds to put a uniform on, pick up a gun, and go to, into a foreign land and uh, defend that foreign land. And when they come back to this country, they find out that well, after they've been wounded or something like that, they want to go out on a deer hunt. They can't do it because they can't buy a gun. Yeah, yeah. This I don't like. I am totally on your side. I find it very hard to explain to perhaps a Medal of Honor winner overseas fighting for our country and our military when he comes back maybe at 20 years of age and he cannot buy a gun. I think they've really got to scrutinize what they're talking about because, quite frankly, I think that's a slap in the face to our young men and women going into our armed forces. Well, we've got the parents should be held responsible for this kid because they admitted that that boy was a monster. Well, and they should be held responsible for what happened. There's so... Uh, uh, young teenage boys yeah. 
a military age. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. There's so many flags that should be flying uh, about people that messed up about this Nicholas Cruz. I mean, whether it's the sheriff's department, whether it's the family, whether it's the FBI, whether it's school administrators, this punk was trouble with a capital T, and nobody, nobody put the hammer down on him. So we got too many good young people out there that are willing to go into military and lay their life on the line. They come back and they got to put up with this kind of crap. I agree with you 100%, Tony. God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Thank Bye. you, sir. Caller, good morning. Quickly, you're on the air. You bet. And they shouldn't be able to vote either. Who shouldn't be able to vote? 18-year-old. Okay, but what are you saying about the uh, the change in the age? If you can pick up a gun and go fight overseas for this country, you mean to tell me you come home, maybe you're a Medal of Honor winner or whatever other service awards, and you can't go buy a gun? I'm against that. I'm I'm with Jerry. That's, that's all wrong. Explain your position. If they're going to raise it, they shouldn't be able to vote. And the only way you can buy one when you come back, if you have a military ID, you can vote and you can buy a gun. Yeah. Period. But the lunacy of, here's where I'm really upset, Doug, and it seems to be, and wheels watch the feedback, please, the lunacy of saying the innocent are guilty and they didn't do anything, but we're still going to hold them accountable. This is driving me nuts. It is. It is. It, it, we should not punish three, oh, how many million gun owners are out there yeah we should not punish them because the government failed to do their job in this case it's not the gun and it's not the gun owners it's the government that failed to do the job in, in so many cases but i i tell you what i'm really getting upset about is myself as a gun owner I, i'm having a finger pointed at me by the schumers and the pelosi's and the feinsteins and others you are a vile filthy, not controlled gun owner. We have to come get your gun. Doug, I haven't had my name on a court docket for anything, and I'm sick and tired of being criticized as being, oh, we got to watch that guy. I know it. I know it. If, if you've never been, on, you know, arrested for anything, no right should be taken away from you, period. Absolutely. Thank you for calling back. I appreciate it. All right. We are going to take a little break and send it back over to our main studios for the news from CBS. And then a very interesting guest coming up at 10.06, Dr. Paul Nathanson. And we're going to be talking about this case of what's called toxic masculinity, which I think is nothing more than garbage. And then at 10.32, a wonderful lady, Maria Espinosa. Don't go away, Zeb at the ranch. I'll be back in about seven minutes. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back. Zeb at the Ranch on a Monday with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley. Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, serving you with a big spring tire sale. Don't forget that. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Also want to remind you about our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, an air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Call them today at 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, saving you money. Also, again, our thanks go out to Dr. Bill and the crew at Ark Animal Hospital, 750 21st Street, near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. And they've been voted many, many times Minicash's best veterinary hospital for your animals. Whether it's a little bitty kitty cat, puppy dog, or great big bunch of cows, they can help you because they're a mixed animal practice, meaning big or small, they love them all. So be sure and remember the number. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, too, it's time to get those puppies vaccinated for that parvo mm -hmm. very important take care of it today call them at 678-1177 arc animal hospital where they have warm hearts for cold noses 
I had this gentleman on the phone with me a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to get him back on the air to talk about what is being termed in the news media today as toxic masculinity. And his this man's name is Dr. Paul Nathanson, along with Dr. Catherine Young. They have written many, many books, including Spreading Misandry, The Teaching of Contempt, for men in popular culture. Good morning, Dr. Nathanson. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine, thanks. It is a pleasure to have you back on the program. And I'm just going to state where I'm coming from right off the bat on this topic because I think today it's nothing more than a crutch, if you will. It's nothing more than another uh, chink in the armor against men in our society by the feminists, etc., to keep criticizing men, downplaying men, making them all look like they have the brains of an ant. I am a little sick and tired of what's being portrayed as men in our society. Therefore, I turn it over to you to tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, no, you're, I think uh, you're correct. I certainly agree with you. I mean, I didn't watch the entire Academy Award ceremony last night, but I did hear the Master of Ceremony uh, say that the something like the best man in the room that night was the statuette because it doesn't have a penis. Uh, so, you know, with that kind, with that level of vulgarity and lewdness when it comes to men, um, I think there's a real problem. Uh, and it certainly goes without saying that nobody could ever make a parallel joke about women's breasts or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Nathanson, we're having a little trouble with your phone. Uh, it's digitalizing and making kind of a cutout sound. Is there another number or a solid line phone that I could have my engineer call you immediately and try to get you back on the air? Uh, I don't have another number, but you can try again. Okay. I'm having trouble hearing you, too. Okay. Uh, well, if you'd hang up in wheels, if you'd try to reestablish the call, I'll do a quick commercial, and we'll be right back with this gentleman. So, wheels, please take care of that right away. Yes, sir. All right, thank okay, you. Bye. And uh, we're going to try again to get Dr. Nathanson on the line so that he can hear us, etc. And while we're waiting for that, I also want to remind you, on Thursdays, we have a special segment called called Cache County School Days, and that segment has really, really grown in popularity, and we want to thank all the people that are the sponsors, and they are, of course, A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley, and they just celebrated their 15th birthday celebration, and don't forget they've got all the clothes, and they've got the baby furniture, and they've got the toys, the puzzles, the games, everything at A Child's World, 1308 Overland in Burley, along with the Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland in Berlin, the number to call for your outpatient surgeries. They can save you money. 677-8888. 677-8888. Whether it's life-saving colonoscopies, hand surgery, whatever, you give them a call and find out more. Ambulatory Surgery Center and a Child's World bringing you on Thursdays Cassia County School Days. Let's see if we have that call reestablished. Wheels, is the doctor ready? Yes, sir, he is. I appreciate that. Thank you, Wills. Uh, Dr. Nathanson, there seems to be more so than ever before in my lifetime, and I'm an old man, I'm 70 years of age, a complete downplaying and uh, degradation of males in our society. Take it from there, please. Well, you introduced this, uh, this segment with uh, the word uh, toxic uh, masculinity which I think is a, a, a real indicator of what's going on. Um, in theory, it could mean that this particular, uh, this or that particular notion of masculinity has become toxic, but in actual fact, it really means all of masculinity, any kind of masculinity, because the, the, the ways in which um, feminists want to change masculinity is basically... Uh, to turn them into uh, what I would call honorary women. In other words, there are no significant aspects of masculinity as such that they admire. They admire men only to the extent that they become more like women. So um, that's where we're at. 
I, I really noticed last night, and I'm glad you brought up the Oscars a few moments ago. I refuse to watch the award shows because they're so phony and they're so anti-conservative in thought. But I did tune in for a little bit because I wanted to get a general characterization of some of the people that were there and some of the comments that were made against our administration and conservatives. And the men that walked up on that stage last night were dressed in such a fashion and they look like extreme wussies. I'm going to use it in very blatant uh, general terminology. They absolutely look like a neutered gender. How far wrong do you think I am? Well, you're not wrong at all. I mean, I don't know. I didn't notice the costumes, um, but and I don't know how much uh, um, meaning there is in any costume, because as you say, it's all artificial. Um, it's a show, after all. But I think that the idea of neutering men um, is, in fact, what is going on. Uh, now, um, very few people would admit that. They would simply say, well, we want men to be more um, uh, easier to live with and uh, help out with the chores at home, and we want equality. But, in fact, their way of achieving equality is to make men men and women as much alike as possible. The idea being that biologically men and women are interchangeable except for a few things like gestation and lactation. But um, there is this idea that the only good man is a woman. How can we overcome this? Because we're hearing it every day on the televisions. We're hearing it every day and reading about it in newspapers. And now the uh, shooter in Florida, this Nicholas Cruz, they're saying that because he was such a strong, toxic male personality. Let me just say that I grew up and I was in high school in the 60s. And we were hunters and avid outdoorsmen at that time. And it was nothing strange for me to have a shotgun or a twenty two or whatever hanging on a gun rack in my pickup when I went to school. There was no such thing as school shootings. There was nobody criticizing us as being toxic males. What in the world happened in our society? Well, that's a really good question, and um, I, don't, I don't have a long enough time to give you a complete answer, but I would say that um, something happened in the 60s, uh, beginning with the invention of the birth control pill and the, the subsequent sexual revolution, which made it appear that men and women were interchangeable and that women would have the same interests uh, sexually as men and the same... Uh, so what happened was that for a few years that seemed to work um, and you had magazines like Cosmopolitan taking a cue from Playboy um, however, over the years, women have come to realize that, in fact, they're not necessarily the same as men. They have their own sexual needs. And um, what, what's happening now is a rebellion against, it's a kind of counter-sexual reformation. Um, so uh, the discontent and the rage on the part of women is certainly coming out. Um, you don't hear a lot about the rage um, that men experience um, from having all these double messages and mixed signals and confusion and having to mind read when they're with women. Um, however, a lot of that, a lot of the anger does come out in other ways, and I think Nicholas Cruz is probably an example uh, of what happens when there's all this rage. Um, but with whatever personal problems he had, I mean, not all men end up um, expressing their rage by shooting up a school. But there is something in common um, with other men. And in fact, one of the chief um, characteristics of the shooters, something like 70% of them have no fathers. And so the breakup of the family is another factor. Absolutely. Uh, now... Michael Ian Black wrote in the New York Times about a week or two, or two ago and became famous overnight for saying that men or boys are broken. Uh, now, uh, it's true that some boys are broken, and maybe all of them are broken in one way or another, but the question is, who broke them? Yeah. And I would argue that 
a society that has no room for men as such is what has broken boys. Well, I would go a step further, and I am not even a millionth of the uh, integrity and the uh, intellect that you have on this subject, but I'm just going to come right out and say it, that the transgender movement in this country is nothing more than a slam at what is honest and what is proven since the beginning of mankind. There are two genders. There are the female and the male genders, nothing else. But the dishonesty ploy of creating in New York State like 68 accepted genders, this is so ridiculously false. I don't know why the human being and the human spirit hasn't denounced it. Well, I would only, let me just uh, modify your statement slightly. Um, there, biologically, there are anomalies. I mean, there are hermaphrodites, for example, who were born with the genital equipment of both male and female. Um, but anomalies are not something that, um, it's not a choice, it's not a, um, it doesn't need all of society to support it. Right. Um, I think that we should treat anomalies of any kind with uh, courtesy and, and even compassion, but not to make them into cultural ideals, and certainly not to tell children, young children, that, well, they can be whatever sex they feel like being, and if they change their minds tomorrow, that's okay, too. Um, it's, um, they, you see, basically what's happened is that the whole idea of a sex, as, as that is a biological organism that's either male or female, the whole idea is to deconstruct that. And by deconstructing that, um, they can also deconstruct the family, which they see as the primary and ultimate um, institution of oppression. Um, by they, of course, I mean what I call ideological feminists, not egalitarian feminists, but ideological feminists who basically see the family as something that they must destroy, root and branch, Absolutely. You know, and pursue this point for me a little bit, if you would, Dr. Nathanson, that I'm just absolutely appalled as what's going on in our school systems today with the furtherance and the preponderance of telling these kids, well, you don't have to tell your parents if you want a sex change or if you want to do uh, the transgender route or whatever, you can come to school and be whoever you want to be. And if you do something, we're not going to notify mom and dad. My goodness, we're tearing apart the fabric of America. America, and that's the American family. Yes, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think that is a big problem. Um, that's not to say, as I mentioned before, though, I mean, I don't want... There are people who sincerely uh, believe that uh, they are, for example, they, they have a body that is wrong for them or what have you. Um, and there might even be biological reasons for that. Um, but I, I just don't think that you can transform society by demolishing the idea that there are two sexes which must interact with each other in order to produce children and for society to endure. I mean, that, I think, is a bit too basic to just uh, demolish through social engineering. You know, social engineering today, Dr. Nathanson, when I was growing up, of course, uh, as a young man, we had our heroes, whether it was uh, Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle going for the home run uh, leadership in the American League, or whether it was the Green Bay Packers and Vince Lombardi, male symbols of getting out and trying harder and trying to achieve. Is that gone forever? Well... Forever is a long time. I mean, I, I can't, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But I would say that, um, yes, the, the idea that um, a male hero is, in fact, a man who accepts responsibility um, for others uh, is something that you find very seldom in movies. Um, you know, you find men who are very good with their, their guns or their weapons, um, but not as many men who actually um, are men in the sense that they do something 
necessary for society that women don't do. Is society... Uh, and the same thing would apply to women in reverse, that women are, um, you know, have their own distinctive uh, contribution to make to society. Well, me men must have that as well. Right. Um, and if you can't do that, any group or any individual who can't do that cannot have a healthy identity. And therefore, many of them either give up by dropping out of school or committing suicide, both of which are, are have much higher rates among men than women, uh, or else they turn against society um, through crime or um, other antisocial behavior. And I think that this Nicholas Cruz is probably one of the latter. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not denying that he might have had personal problems that are unique to him. Uh, I don't think that he was insane. He wasn't hearing voices or or having hallucinations, but he was certainly troubled as an individual. But I think the larger context that might have pushed him over the edge is this sense that he had no idea what it is to be a man uh, or that being a man could be a, a good thing. Yeah. Um, and I think that probably most boys his age have a very similar feeling. Am I too much of an idealist today in 2018 that I wish and I really want to have the days of the Saturday Evening Post come back where mom and dad were taking the kids to church and they were sitting around the table eating dinner together or Thanksgiving together and I went out in the backyard and played catch with my dad. Are those days too much of an ideal that I'll never see again? Oh, I don't think that we're, I don't think we'll, certainly not in our lifetimes, I'm as old as you are, <laughs> we're not going to see that. Um, and I think you should remember that although those things were very good, um, other things were not so good. <laughs> I mean, no, no period in history um, is, should be idealized beyond the reality. The same period that had strong families also had, you know, strong racism and you know so let's not we don't need to idealize any period um but uh, that doesn't mean we can't learn from history and there were good things that uh, we would do well to have again you know, Dr. Nathanson, in all your studies and all your books that you have co-written with Dr. Catherine Young, uh, when you look at society as a whole as to where we were 50 years ago, where we were 30 years ago, and where we are today, uh, and when you look into a somewhat of a crystal ball, where are we headed uh, by the year 2025, do you think, with men and women in our society? Well, you know, I think that we are... Uh, basically in the middle of a civil war between men and women. Um, I might not have said that a year ago or even six months ago, um, but since the Hollywood scandals and everything that resulted from it, I would say that we are in, um, a, we're in a war. Uh, and it's not a war that is being waged primarily with, uh, with weapons, or at least not with uh, um, not in a military style, but it's a war of words and, a, and of ideas and of legal changes and legislation. These are the these are the things that revolutionaries today are using to achieve what used to be achieved by you know storming the barricades with uh, with uh, military weapons. So. If I'm correct, and if there is a war, and I, I do think there is, um, then, as I say, the outlook for the immediate future is not good. Unless, of course, things get so out of hand um, that people just draw back and say, hey, wait a minute, we can't go on like this. Yeah. Um, and that, is, that has happened. Uh, another way of describing the situation today is to call it a moral panic. A moral, a moral panic is when society becomes um, very frightened of forces beyond its control, um, locates a, uh, a group that it can blame uh, uh, the situation on and project its anxiety onto that group. They're called scapegoats. Um, and then things get out of control after a few years, and uh, 
people begin to hold back and say, wait a minute, we can't go on like this. It happened recently with the, um, there was a moral panic over what was known as um, false, well, it began as a um, repressed memory syndrome, uh, and they, and uh, there was um, all psychologists and all sorts of observers were saying that children were remembering in, in their offices, they were remembering being um, forced into cannibalism and mm-hmm. orgiastic sex and what have you in their in church basements and uh, the basements of their daycare centers. Um, so that that moral panic ended, but it it did incalculable damage to to many many families. Children were taken away from their parents. Laws were changed, um, and it all turned out to be um, a kind of. Uh, uh, foolishness. I mean, the psychologists eventually admitted that they had asked these children leading questions. They had used drugs to make them remember some things and not others. Um, so we've had moral panics before. They do eventually run out of steam. Um, they can leave a lot of damage in their wake. Um, so that's that's where we are. I, I wish I could give you glad tidings. <laughs> I, you know, in the immediate future, we're going to have to just try to live with this as best we can. Um, uh, there are, there. you know, I think that the Me Too movement has pointed out that there are some things that need to change. I mean, why should women, or anybody, because it's not only women, why should they have to worry about That's being right. intimidated at work? I agree. Um, there should be ways of solving these problems, and uh, some of them might be uh, new policies in offices. Um, I don't think that the answer, however, is to abandon the entire legal system that has taken us centuries to build up with the presumption of innocence and the necessity for due process, I don't think those are things that should be abandoned. And at the moment, they're, they're being undermined severely. I agree. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have this man back again in the future. I really respect and appreciate his comments. Dr. Paul Nathanson, thank you, sir. God bless you, and please come back in the near future. Sure, anything. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Very interesting gentleman, and I like his very subtle approach to the problems. Thank you very much, Dr. Paul Nathanson. Right now, we're going to send it back over to our main studios. I'll be back in about three minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb. Oh, good morning, and we're going to wrap up this uh, hour by having one of my favorite guests on the program for this segment. And she is the National Director of the Remembrance Project, which honors and remembers Americans and legal residents residents who have been killed by illegal aliens and we say a good morning to maria espinoza good morning maria how are you go ahead sir maria good morning how are you today I'm doing well, Deb. How about you? Very well, thank you. And I'm so glad to have you on the program. I wanted to talk to you this morning about uh, the DACA and the Dreamers and the big push, what's happening in Oakland, California, with the mayor to protect the illegal alien citizens of another country, not our country. What are your thoughts about the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, better known as DACA? And today is the deadline. They've got to come up with some ideas today to keep it in effect. Right. Today is the deadline, and you know, our stance with the Remembrance Project is the same, which is no amnesty. And, you know, we either are enforcing our laws, or we don't have laws. We are either a uh, lawful nation or a lawless nation. So it's very simple, and we have immigration laws that where people can apply to enter our country legally, and these DACA recipients who are the average age are here 24 to 26 years old, all the way up to 36 and 37 years old. So 
uh, you know, they have had plenty of time to get right with our country and follow the laws, but, you know, they chose not to. So now they're in this predicament because Obama um, unconstitutionally um, gave them a temporary status, and that simply is not right. But we'll see what what's going to going to go on, I think, uh, Jeff, that, you know, the Democrats will be pointing at President Donald Trump, that him is uh, trying to blame President Trump for this situation, but basically their parents and themselves, uh, the illegal aliens, are at, at, to blame, and also our representatives who did not stop then-President Obama from do, uh, putting forth this unconstitutional directive. I don't care if they're 20 years of age. I don't care if they're 36 years of age. I am sick and tired as a legal citizen and a taxpayer of this country being told I have to pay and I have to subsidize this movement. When they blocked the entrance to Disneyland and they were demanding citizenship and they were demanding this and that, my only demand back is let's deport them right now and not have any more dust on the subject. I am fed up with being demanded to by illegal aliens in this country. Absolutely, and you can see that the that sentiment and that mindset, and uh, you know, is building because it, it's reality, it's the truth, it's the law. And look at Zeb, our politicians are legislating and going to bat for non-citizens when our families, angel moms and dads angel families where their children and loved ones are six feet in the ground, you know, through no fault of their own, permanently separated uh, from their loved ones forever. And, and this is, you know, the comparison that people really have to pay attention to. Um, and, and this is where we are. Either, um, again, we protect Americans or, or not. You know, and this is what happens. And, and you know, how many more lives that um, have to be stolen at the hands of an illegal alien because our borders are not secured, existing laws are not enforced, and legislators are not putting uh, Americans in our country first. I just can't even imagine the sorrow and the heartache from the Steinle family. I can't even imagine the sorrow and the heartache from other families that have been, uh, their children have been killed by drunk drivers that are illegal aliens or shot by illegal aliens that shouldn't have been here. And then when this Oakland mayor stands up and says she's blatantly going to defy the law and give the illegal aliens warnings so they can hide out and run and, and shield themselves from any ice uh, deferment uh, and putting them in jail. My God, I'm sitting here going, Maria, what kind of an American country is this? Exactly. And we're asking for um, and supporting Director of ICE, Tom Homan, to prosecute these individuals and go after them and for the Attorney General Jeff Sessions to prosecute under Section Title 8, Section 1324. You know, these sanctuary city mayors and uh, liberal judges will have a very difficult time implementing their sanctuary policies inside a jail cell. But how do we go about doing that? I am shocked that the American public, and Wheels, we're getting feedback on this call, please. I am shocked the American public hasn't said enough is enough. There are laws. We all live in a nation of laws, but yet the Democrats and the liberals, whether it's Rahm Emanuel, whether it's Bill de Blasio, or this mayor of Oakland, they're just basically saying we're not going to honor the law. We're going to do this for people that don't even belong here. Oh, exactly. That's why the call t must continue, Zeb. Call their legislators and voice their opinions on this issue and others. And you don't have to be from California just to make this call about this Oakland mayor. You know, we're supporting the Oakland sheriff and other sheriffs in California who want laws because they know that their their jobs and, and their lives are on the line when these um, judges like, and mayors, like this Oakland mayor, um, warned these individuals, and now our uh, agents and police officers and sheriffs have to go out and locate these individuals as criminal, illegal aliens, and they're the ones who are placing our uh, place in a more dangerous situation rather than going and rounding them up 
um, at their companies or wh- wherever they might be, or in the jail when the officials have detained them. You know, I'm sure that you... But you mentioned about payment. Yes. So recently, there that came out that there was an illegal alien who committed fraud for, you know, for about 30 years, and he has defrauded the American people of over $360,000. That's just one individual. Extrapolate that across the whole United States and how many illegal aliens are here, and they're all using fraudulent papers because they're illegally in the country. And another thing that your listeners have to watch out for in this upcoming omnibus spending bill that's supposed to be going through at the end of this month, on March 23rd, I believe, um, they're trying to sneak in this amnesty for DACA recipients in that bill. And, And Senator Jeff Flake, true to his name, Flake, is pushing that. Yeah. You know, I just absolutely can't understand why I should be arrested and picked up, I should say, and then possibly arrested for driving 65 in a 55-mile-an-hour zone or 50 in a 35. I've got to honor the laws, and I've got to take my punishment. But when you have mayors and politicians on the left that are absolutely defying the law and saying, we're not going to honor that, like Rahm Emanuel and Bill de Blasio, I just sit here and I know I'm beleaguering this point, but why aren't they arrested? Why aren't they thrown in jail and taken out of their office? And they should be. They're aiding and abandoning illegal aliens, and it's a federal law. It's right there on the books. And again, we're encouraging the administration, ICE, um, the AG's office. It really is Attorney General Jeff Sessions. You know, but they have to hear from us, and they can call the White House also about this issue and let them know that these individuals must be arrested under Title VIII, 1324, and the White House phone number is 202-456-1111. And I also, um, and that number again, 202-456-1111, Zip, and I also encourage your listeners to sign up for our email address and sign our petitions that we, we have going on, currently asking the administration for no DACA, no amnesty. You know, Maria, I've got to ask you this question. I was going to ask you the last time you were on my program. As much as you go around and you're doing the public speaking, you're on my radio program right now, have you personally been confronted by the left and really uh, been denounced by them? Can you give us an instance as to what kind of mindset they have when they approach you? Well, um, you have several different people, I think, coming from different angles there, but you're right. Um, you know, I get Latinos who have that tribal mentality that think that they, just because you have a, um, Espinosa as a last name that I'm going to be, uh, you know, champion the illegal aliens. But, you know, that's why we created America First Latinos in order to push back because so many Latinos feel like we're getting the bad reputation and bad names because automatically the media has placed out there, falsely, the fake news has um, placed out there that if you're Hispanic, you are for um, illegal aliens, open borders, and you're a Democrat. Well, that's not true. So we create America First Latinos in order to push back, you know, that broad brush there that we're painted with. But also, um, you know, I have opinion of my own. I, I do the research. You know, we've do, been doing this for eight years. And, um, you know, the law is a law. And like you said, you know, there, there's um, if you get arrested for something or, or if you break the law, Zeb, then you're going to be arrested, just like everyone else. And, you know, we need laws for a civil society. Um, and also on the liberals, oh, my goodness, you know, just look up at some... Um, uh, Politico and Southern Poverty Law Center, the um, American Civil Liberties Union, or you know, civil unions. Yeah, they're, they're um, you know, they have articles out there where they're just you know trashing and telling lies and yeah. you know. So, but that's okay. Um, that's fine. That's the way they work, and I think that um, they're um, completely ludicrous. Um, accusations and articles it may exposes them as well if people understand that look if we can't take care of our own children our own country then you know we certainly don't have a country and it's really exposing these uh, legislators for what they have been doing or not doing 
for our country for decades. Absolutely. And I would say that this 2018 midterm election is extremely important. And I'm just going to be very blatant. Uh, I think it's a great chance for us that want the laws of this country honored to really force the Democrats and the liberals into more of a closet by voting against them coming up in November. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have to get everyone out there, and, you know, we have to also be, it might be too late in some states, but we, we certainly need to be um, helping conservative candidates and people stepping up to um, champion this country. We're in dire need of good leadership and people who place Americans first. Maria, I really appreciate you coming on the program on behalf of the Remembrance Project. And quickly, tell my audience a little bit more about it before you leave and how they possibly can help. All right. Thank you, Zeb. Our website is www.therememberanceproject.org, therememberanceproject.org, and I'm completely volunteer, so I appreciate any, you know, $10, $5, $20, anything that you can give and donate online. But I also ask that for uh, people to support and donate to their local candidates or, you know, uh, across states, too, that where they really need um, your help. So Absolutely. God bless you and your listeners. Jeff. Maria Espinosa, a great friend of this program. God bless you and thank you. Come back soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. All righty. A wonderful lady right there, and I absolutely enjoy having her on the program. And she is right. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Right now, it's time for the... I want to get some phone calls here this morning. I want you to kind of chime in and let us know what you thought about some of the guests we've had here this morning, whether it was Frosty or Megan Barth or Dr. Paul Nathanson or the lady that just finished, Maria Espinosa. I'd like to hear what you have to say thank you we try to provide the absolute best guests from anywhere and everywhere in this united states and quite frankly foreign countries so give us a call we'd like to hear from you right now it's time for the weather brought to you by scarrow's meats 331 north road jerome don scarrow and the crew oh delicious meats i'm telling you whether it's smoked hams or whether it's marinated prime rib or bacon 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 i love bacon breakfast sausages brats it's all great and you can call them or go to their website 324 or go to scarrowsmeats.com. Delicious Scarrows Meats. Right now, here's the weather. If you were praying for sunny skies for this week, well, your prayers have been answered. Here is your weather forecast for Zevith Ranch. We are looking at mostly sunny skies for today. A little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west right around 15 miles an hour. Just possible as high as 30. We are expecting a high of 36. For tonight, mostly clear skies with a low of 18. And this high-pressure system will be sticking around with us for the next couple of days. For tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 38. Mostly clear for tomorrow night, low of 17. For Wednesday, sunny and 41. More clouds could be rolling in for Wednesday night. Partly cloudy skies with a low of 24. By Thursday, partly sunny, 46. And for Friday, slight chance of rain or snow in the forecast. Mostly cloudy skies. And a high of 46. That is your weather forecast for Zephyr Duran. Oh, she does a good job. Thank you very much. Scarrow's Meats. Mmm, mmm delicious. That's what they say, changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, the number to call, 324-7657, bringing you the weather this hour. Okay. Now, your turn. Give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. like to hear from you. I clipped out uh, quite a few different little statistics. I lost that sheet. What did I do with it? Here it is. And uh, some of these were really, really interesting. Um, I found these in Newsmax magazine. And how many times per day, on average, that someone on the terror watch list applies for permission to enter the United States? Seven. Seven times per day. No wonder we have to be watchful. And here's something else, too. 2,000 people 
are reported missing or lost each day in the United States. Well over a half a million each year. Most are found, but not always alive. 2,000 people per day. I had no idea. And in this one here, it's no wonder that people in Russia have a surly kind of a night attitude. The total amount of sunshine the city of Moscow received for the entire month of December, you're not going to believe this, six minutes. (laughs) No, No wonder they walk around going Bolshevik. Uh, Yeah, six minutes. That is the total amount of sunshine the city of Moscow had for the entire month of December. Holy cow. The normal average in that city in the wintertime is 18 hours. (laughs) This year they only had six minutes. Holy smokes. 436-2244-1866-927-4444. Four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. Give me a call. I'd like to hear from you, and uh, we'll talk about anything uh, about our guests that we had this morning or any other subjects. So give us a call while I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in. I can see you dialing. I want to talk to you a little bit about Thinking Spring. Oh, they are Thinking Spring at all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab tire. Centers. Whew, I'm glad somebody is. I'm sick of winter. I really have had enough of snowfall and ice and being chilly. Well, you can roll into spring worry free on tires from your Magic Valley Les Schwab tire centers like the Terramax HT for your pickup and SUV, all season traction, affordable pricing, or how about this, the Ultra Z900 for your passenger cars, the ultimate in tire technology, 65 to 80,000 miles warranty. I'll tell you what, you better get in there and check them out today along with the best in brake service and front end alignments and shocks and struts and batteries at all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, the best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Okay, come on, quickly, give me a call. I want one more call before I get out of here for the day. We went up to the uh, state basketball tournament on Saturday, and holy moly, at the Ford Idaho Center, that was quite an experience. I mean, that place was jam-packed with people from all around the state, Excellent ball games, great facility to have the games, and uh, we went up to watch my grandson as he is a sophomore guard for the Kimberly Bulldogs, and they fell short. They did not get the state championship, ended up second in the state, Valley second in the state, and as I said earlier this morning, and I want to say it again, to all the teams from this area that made it to state and perhaps didn't come home with the accolades and the trophies of first place hey give yourselves a pat on the back because you really played well had a great season and uh there's next year okay uh calls welcome 436-2244-1866-927-4587 and uh love to have a call from you i noticed that they were really really cautious up there at the Ford Idaho Center. When you go in, you're going to check your purse if you're ladies, and they're going to ask if you have any pocket knives. And like a big dummy, I had my pocket knife. I've got one of those clip-on knives on my pocket, a real fancy one my son-in-law Nick gave to me a couple of years ago at Christmas. And I really cherish that knife because it's a beautiful uh, kind of a bone handle, and it's got that clip on and everything. And I walk up there, and the guy says, you got a jackknife in your pocket? And I go, "Uh, yeah, I do. And he says, well, you'll either have to give it up or you'll have to take it back to your car. 
like the car was parked 19 miles back in the parking center and my lovely bride said i'll take it back i got to get something else anyway and so she trudged back to the car and saved my knife and i don't blame them i don't blame them at all for being cautious in this day and age so appreciate their effort Tomorrow on the program, we are going to have Michael Doherty on the program. Michael always is very interesting. And then, of course, we're going to have Speaker of the House Scott Bedke coming on with our Idaho legislative update brought to you by Handy Truck Lines. Then at 10.06, of course, we've got my old buddy. And by the way, he was up at the state tournament with his whole family. They had like nine or ten seats down below us. Dr. Ken Turner, Dr. History is going to be here. And we've got some others, too. So don't miss that. Coming up tomorrow on the program. Program. We'll saddle the horse and ride for three hours right here on Zeb at the Ranch, K Bar 1230, and then streaming live on the internet, zebbell.com. Oh, and one other quick note I had quite a few people call me last week saying, How can we get your cow pies and coffee cups? Go to zebbell.com, click on where it says cow pies, put your address in there, and we'll make sure you get it, okay? Got you covered. Until tomorrow morning at 8.06, we're going to turn it back over to Wheels and remember. Remember, the way things were are the way things ought to be.